Okay, so in this lesson, we're going to be solving exponential equations. So remember, we've been talking about exp uh, exponential functions. An exponential equation means that you have a variable in the exponent. So we're going to be learning how to solve these. There's lots of different ways of solving them. So we're going to go over several different um, methods. So first, um, one way to solve an exponential equation is solving by matching up your bases. So making your bases equivalent. So solve exponential equations using equivalent bases. So when each side of the equation contains an exponential term, each side of the equation is written or can be rewritten with the same base. Because if this base equals this base and they're equal, that means their exponents have to be equal. So an example here. 4 equals 4, so that means this exponent has to be the same as this exponent for those to be equal, okay? So sometimes they don't match, but sometimes you can change it to match them. So if we look at the first example, notice these bases are equal, which means these exponents are equal. So what I can do is just set 5x equal to x plus 12, and then just solve this linear equation. So subtract x, I get 4x equals 12, so x will equal 3. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> okay, so x equals 3. I can plug it back in if I want just to double check it and make sure that it's true. Okay? So moving on to the next example, notice this base is 8, but this base is 1 8. I can write 1 8 to have a base of 8. I can do 8 to the negative 1 power. That means the same thing as 1 over 8. We've talked about that several times. So since I rewrote this to have this, I need my original exponent in parentheses because I would need to distribute the negative 1 exponent. So you're trying to see if you can match your bases. So since those bases are now equal, I can set these equal. So that would be x minus 9. I'm going to go ahead and distribute and put minus 2x, and that will make that plus 9. Okay, so now it's just a linear equation. I'm going to add 2x. So that's 3x minus 9 equals 9. Add 9. We get 3x equals 18, so x will equal 6. So again, a great way to check it is just to plug that back in for the exponents and make sure that they're equal. So sometimes the bases um, are not the same, but you can change a base to match um, the other base. Next one. Notice this base is 11. This base is 121. Those are not the same, but I can do 11 squared, which equals 121. So instead of putting 121, I can write 11 squared, but then make sure that you bring down that original exponent. So notice my bases are now the same, which means their exponents are the same. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute 2x minus 8 equals x. It's now a linear equation. So I'm going to subtract 2x over negative 8 equals negative x. So x will equal positive 8. So there's my solution. Again, you can easily plug that back in. Up at the top, if you plug it in, you have 11 to the 8th power. And then you have 8 minus 4, which is 4. So you should be getting the same answer on both sides when you work that out. So that's why one way of solving an exponential equation is tr trying to make your bases equal. So you can just set the exponents equal to each other. Okay, so the next way method we're going to talk about is solving using inverse properties. Remember, a log that has the same base as the base of an exponential, they cancel each other out. Um, so solving exponential equations by taking the log of both sides. If the equation contains or can be written with a single exponent term, can be written in the form b to the x, b to the y. Okay, So you're first going to, to do this method, isolate the exponential term, which means get the base and the exponent by itself. Then you're going to take the log of both sides to unlock the variable, which it, which it says remember to use the same base as the exponential term, so that way they unlock each other and they can cancel each other out. Then you're going to isolate the variable and evaluate the expression. 
So looking at this first example, first I want to isolate my base and exponent. So I want to get that by itself. So first step would be to divide by 5. Now what I can do is I can take the log of both sides. Since this base is 4, I'm going to take the log with base 4 of 4 to the x minus 1. And then whatever I do to one side, I must do the same exact thing to the other. So log base 4 of 100. So I took the log base 4 of 100 on both sides. So remember, these two cancel each other out, which is the whole reason I did that. So I have x minus 1 equals log base 4 of 100. And then to get x by itself, add 1. I can't actually add these because this is a log. So I'm going to have to type in log base 4 of 100 in the calculator, and I'm going to add 1. So let's go to the calculator and do that. <coughs> so remember to change the base on a log term. We need to go to math, go up. I'm taking the log of base 4 of 100. And then outside of that, I need to add 1. So you're going to get a decimal here. It says to round to three decimal places. So that would be 4.322. So this is approximate. OK, so first step is to isolate your base and exponent. And then you can take the log with the base that you need to cancel out of both sides, and then you can evaluate it. All right, let's take a look at another example. So first step is to isolate my base and exponent. So I first need to subtract 6. So that's 21 equals e to the 9x power. Now I'm going to take the log of both sides, but we want the base to match this base so it cancels. So I'm going to take the natural log of both sides, because remember natural log has a base e. So these cancel each other out. I'm left with 9x over here equals the natural log of 21. <coughs> and then I can divide by 9 to get my solution. So I need to, on the calculator, I need to use my natural log button. So natural log is right here to the left of 4. So I don't need to type in the base. Remember, natural log automatically knows it has a base of E. So natural log of 21. And then I'm dividing that answer by 9. So again, we'll run into three decimal places. That would be 0.338. And you can check it by plugging it back into your x there. So this is solving um, using inverse properties, which means you're taking the log of both sides in order to cancel out that log. <clears throat> All right, next one. Look at your base and exponent. You want to isolate it. First thing, I would have subtract 2. <coughs> Next step, I would divide by 15, because remember, you have to isolate it. So that would give you 100. Now, in order, once I have it isolated, I'm going to take the log of both sides. I'm taking the log of whatever base I need for this to cancel out. Base 10 means you have a common log. So I'm going to take the common log of both sides. I don't need a base there. I know it's base 10. I have to do the same exact thing to the other side. So those cancel, I'm left with x over 4 equals log of 100. And then I need to multiply both sides by 4 to get x by itself. Now on this part, you can put that 4 in front if you would like, because it's just a number in front. <clears throat> or you can multiply it. Either way, you're going to get the same answer. So let's type it in. Since I'm using common log, I can use the common log on the calculator. So you can do 4 and then common log. You don't need to put a base in for that. You get 8. You could also do common log of 100 and then times that by 4. It gives you the same answer. So either way, you're going to get x equals 8.
Okay, so this is just another way of solving an exponential, taking the log of both sides, so that way you can cancel out that base log and then also the base on the exponent. The other way, the next method we're going to talk about is solving by rewriting. So we can solve it by rewriting to an exponential in a logarithm. Remember, we've talked about that a couple of times now. So solving exponential equations by rewriting. If the equation contains or can be written with a single exponential term. <clears throat> so your first step is to isolate the exponential term which means your base and exponent. Then you're going to rewrite to law in log form in order to unlock the variable, which means um, be able to um, get rid of that. So then you're going to isolate the variable and evaluate the logarithm. So first step is to isolate. So I'm going to subtract 1. And then that's 243. Next step is to change, since I've already isolated, my next step is to um, rewrite with log form. So remember, you always begin with your base. So log base 3 of 243 equals 2x minus 7. Okay, so then this next part, um, log base 3 of 243 I can go ahead and I actually know that that's going to give me a whole number because 3 raised to the fifth power gives me 243. So I'm going to go ahead and put a 5 here. You can use a calculator to evaluate that. It's going to give you a 5 equals 2x minus 7. <clears throat> so again, I already know what this equals. You can use a calculator to plug it in. It's going to give you a 5. So I'm going to add 7. So that's going to be 12 equals 2x. So x will be 6. So another way of solving an exponential is to isolate your base. Then you can take the uh, rewrite it as a log function, so log form, and then you can evaluate and isolate your variable. Okay, so the next part, we're going to isolate this, so subtract 7. So that's going to be 54.6. Now I'm going to change it to log form. So I'm taking my base, E, so natural log. I'm not going to write the base, raised to the 54.6. So natural log of 54.6 is going to equal negative x over 2. Okay, so I know this is not going to give me a whole number, so I'm going to go ahead and isolate my x, and I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the 2, but also the negative, so I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 2. So that would be negative 2 natural log of 54.6 equals x. They both cancel out. <clears throat> so using the calculator, you would type in negative 2 natural log. Remember, there's no base needed. Uh, 54.6. So you get um, more round into three decimal places, so that would just be negative eight. So again, this is another way of solving an exponential. Isolate it, then change it to log form, and then you can isolate your variable x to solve for it. Okay, so next one, I'm going to isolate first. So first step would be to multiply both sides by the 3 to get rid of that. And then I'm going to change it to log form. If you want, you can rewrite this on the left side because you're always starting with the base. So my base is 10, so I would have a common log of 15 equals x plus 6. I know this is not a whole number, so I'm going to go ahead and subtract 6 over. Remember, we can't actually subtract those, right? Log of 15 <coughs> and then minus 6 equals x. So common log of 15 minus 6 
and we get negative four. We're running to three decimal places, so that would be 0.824. Okay, so again, this is rewriting. So you're solving exponentials by rewriting to a log form, and then you're evaluating from there. The last method that we're gonna go over on solving an exponential equation is solving by graphing. So what you're gonna do is graph your left side of the equation as one function, graph the right side as the second one. Then you're gonna identify the points of intersection, and then you're solving for x, so you're just looking at the x values of those intersection points. So I'm gonna use a calculator. <clears throat> so I'm going to plug function one, so two to the x minus three plus seven, into um, y1, y2, I'm gonna plug in an eight. So I'm gonna to go to my calculator, go to y equals, so I'm typing in 2 caret x minus 3, and then outside of it, I'm putting plus 7. Y2, I'm putting an 8. I'm going to press graph. If your table or your graph looks weird, then you can do zoom 6. It'll get it back to standard viewing window. So we're trying to find where is this exponential graph crossing this straight horizontal line. So we are looking at that point there. So points of intersection can be found by doing second calc five and then going to that point of intersection, pressing enter three times, it should say intersection. So they are crossing <coughs> at three, eight. So I'm going to go ahead and plot that point one, two, three, eight. So I'm going to draw both of them. So 3, 8 is your point of intersection. And then your solution, we're just solving the equation. So x equals 3. So again, this is just another way of solving an exponential, solving it graphically. So last one we're going to look at, we are plugging in. So I'm going to plug in in parentheses 1 half raised to the 3x minus 8 power. And then the right side is a 4. So I'm going to graph that. So 1 half needs to be in parentheses because that's my entire base. I'm raising it to the 3x minus 8 power. And then I want 4 and y2. Okay, notice it's an exponential decay because our base is one half. So between zero and one. So I'm gonna find my point of intersection. So second calc five, enter, enter, enter. <clears throat> Two, four is the point of intersection here. So point of intersection, 2, 4, we're solving it, trying to find x. So graphically, pretty easy. We're just graphing both of them, and then we're finding that point of intersection. Okay, so several ways of solving an exponential equation, which means you have a missing variable or a variable in the exponent spot. Um, we solved by graphing, we solved by rewriting, we solved by... Um, inverse property, which meant taking the log of both sides so your bases would cancel out. And then the first example we did was solving by making the bases equal to each other. So there's lots of different ways, and each way works differently depending on what type of equation you have. So if you have any questions on solving exponential equations, please let me know.